Romans. Any country. Lend me your ears. Who said that, by the way? That is a famous. Is that Shakespeare or? Pardon? It is Shakespeare. Oh, it's Julius Caesar. Yeah, that's where it is. It's Julius Caesar. Okay, let's pick it up at 26. Uh, it preaches on sin. Oh, I, I said this gives the arguments. This is an attorney. Paul is at Father Bless Now the Lesson. Your will to be done today. In Christ's name, amen. Uh, this is giving instructions to the, the persuasive, a persuasive argument to persuade. We doth but persuade men. Where is that found in the Bible? We persuade men. Anybody recall? We persuade. This, it, it is to be, a, this is a persuasion. We are to persuade people. Isn't that found? Uh, absent from the body and present with the Lord. Where's that? Help me out on this, some of this stuff. Isn't that, uh, it's chap that's chapter 5, verse 8. It's later in that in, in that chapter. We but persuade men. I think it's uh, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We are to persuade people. So uh, I heard a preacher screaming and yelling, and, and he said this, uh, I skinned him alive today. I skinned him alive today. You see, a part of the problem is uh, is that I, I've been, I went to the university, I got an education, you're not going to flip plant me. I, I skinned them alive today. Has anybody here ever skinned in it? Yeah, what is that? Is that for 2 Corinthians 5? No. For, it's Romans 8, verse 30, since you should have to read it. Read it to me. For I am persuaded that neither death nor death. No, 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 no. That's not verse. Yeah, what is it? It is Second Corinthians five eleven. We persuade them. We're to persuade them. I have got it out and skinned. Maybe uh, I don't know if it's as high as five hundred. Five hundred rabbits. They're in the. They're not in the freezer. We we roast them. We sell them live, we sell them dead. We don't do that anymore. But I can, I, I can tell you this. Anytime I ever skinned out an animal, how was he when he was when it was over? When the skinning was over, he was what? Lunch. He was he was deader than a hammer. He was dead deader than a hammer. If you skin the congregation out, you kill it. We're, a pastor's not supposed to do that. He is to persuade people, not skin them. All, all that kind of stuff is just, it, that, that, that's all hatched in hell. Hatched in hell. All right, so he brings up sin. He brings up um, uh, the means of sales. Uh, the means of salvation through Romans 2, 3, and 4, he argues with them. And he speaks on a level that he's speaking to Jewish people who know and understand about Abraham and, and all of these, these things that are going on. He speaks to that. Now, we've been, uh, we've been through all of this, this arguing. The arguing takes place, Romans 1 through Romans 8. I think we ended at Romans uh, 7. And in class, the guys were arguing, is this a man uh, that is, is saved or unsaved? Well, to me, when you read Romans, you know, he says, uh, 
how do I get victory? He can't get victory. Paul writes this. He says, I, how do I get victory? How do you get victory? I thank God through what? It, he, the only way to get victory is through the Lord. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord. That's the only way he can get victory. So the conclusion, don't ask me how you had the conclusion that it's a lost man speaking. The conclusion is the saved man speaking. That's the only way he can get victory. Amen. It's through the, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, uh, after Romans 8, we go then to how the gospel relates to Israel. Paul writes this. What uh, is wish a Bible? Oh boy, I wish I may, I wish I might have this wish I may today. So we think of wishing, I wish. Like rubbing a rabbit's foot, crossing your fingers, all that kind of stuff. Is wish a Bible word? Wish is a Bible word. Does anybody know how many times it occurs in the Bible? No, I think it's I think it's about six times. Paul uses it. Paul wishes himself a curse. I wish I could go to hell for my countrymen to see Israel get saved. By the way, when does Israel get saved? When Jesus comes back, when Jesus comes back how, how long does it take for them to get saved? The nation. Real fast. Three and a half years. Uh, well, I think, I think it's the day of when they see him. Oh, yeah. Visually, when they visually see him. When they say, blessed are you, comes in the name of the Lord. It's when, when they see him, he, they're saved in a day. I think it says they, they're saved in a day. They see them. I've heard that's the, the great relations. That's what drives them. Say that again. The great tribulation drives them. Drives them to the Lord. It drives the trip. Drives them there. But when they see the physical coming of the every eye shall see him. Huh? Is they're going to see him, and the whole nation gets saved in one day. A lot of people watch out too. Blood. Oh, it's going to be. It's going to make the Holocaust look like they. They say the Holocaust will be dropping the book. It, 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 that's going to be like nothing compared to what's coming. And by the way, we see that uh, we, we see the, some rumblings. We're, we're seeing rumblings in the United States of America. Is any of this new? We lived through this. It's 1970. They're saying that this is done by professionals, and the professionals are they're trotting them out. Professionals are doing this, and they go from they go from one ride to the next ride, and they're all paid. Well, uh, now I have it in my side notes in my sermon. We're, by the way, we're we're pre we're preaching on the devil today, and uh, I know one guy. He preached first Mother's Day. He preaches on hell. It's a nice tradition. Preaches on. I don't think I'm preaching on Mother's Day. I'm going to preach on Mother's Day, but I'm not preaching about Mother's Day. I got a whole series on this stuff. So back in the day, this is 1970, uh, the shooting took place at what university? Kent State. Kent State, what day? May the what? Four. Yeah, yesterday. Well, is this the Cinco de Mayo? Is today that Cinco de Mayo? All right, people ask, what is the Cinco de Mayo? And that is, the joke is, with uh, Trivisanos, they, they sunk a ship filled with mayonnaise. Cinco is five, of, the day means of, and mayo means may, the fifth of May. Right? Mayo. They, they got, they, If you're going what? to speak Spanish, speak Spanish. Oh. Cinco de Mayo, tell them, Cinco de Mayo. Mayo. They got, they got, the, who did they get their freedom from, Spain? Oh, from Mexico. They got their freedom from Mexico. No, is that's what that's uh, celebrating. No, they won a victory and then they went back to business as usual. Whatever. Whatever. It's true. The idea is, let's get back to the May the 4th, is uh, there were people that, uh, grandmothers, they own, uh, they own, um, not condos. 
what do you call it? It's a double. They own a double. Duplex. Duplex and up and a down, old houses. And what does grandma do with this? She rents them out. Well, two weeks before, before Cinco de Mayo, <laughs> two weeks before that, there were vacancies. Within, within a day, within the two weeks of May the 4th, there were, there were no vacancies in Kent. They, they filled all those rooms up, including the back room. <laughs> they filled them all up. And Grandma was more than willing to rent it out and collect the rent. Well, where did, the ones that rent those rooms are students. Well, all of a sudden, there were no rentals in Kent because they were all inhabited. Well, it's because there's nothing new under the sun. These people were coming in from all over the country. They were coming all over. The thing they didn't bank on is that they put a clip of loaded, at live ammo into the clip. And they didn't count on that. And the famous picture, anybody know the famous picture? The girl is going like this and she's weeping in her long hair, is hanging there like she's, like she's gross. Laying there in the rain, she's going like this. She's a 13-year-old brat that skipped school, her seventh grade class. And that's who these people are. There's nothing new. This is just a repeat of what took place back then. And probably what took place 50 years before that. And 50, they, they rioted in New York over the Civil War. They didn't want to go. They were rioting. And none of this is new. We, we just tend to forget right away. We, we, uh, it, it, doesn't, it takes a week or two, we forget, and it's right back to whatever they're doing. I like how they were, uh, the one protester was, they were on a building and they were, they were demanding that they bring in snacks. No. Oh, I know. They had a whole list. They had to be gluten free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here, have another piece of lard. <laughs> Oh, on and on it goes. I went to junior high with these people, and I remember when the riots were happening. My dad, my dad said, "Dad, take a look at that. That's our next generation of leaders." Mm -hmm. And sure enough, they're in the White House. Mm -hmm. he, he said that 75, 70 years ago. So anyway, it's how how the gospel relates to Israel. So. One of, the, one of the things that Paul wishes for is that he could go to hell in order he would trade places. Now, you can't do that. He could do that, but that was his wish. It's, it's, and then when he's preaching to them, it's, it's, it's like preaching to deaf ears. Why will Israel not get... There is a verse about why Israel will not get saved. It has everything to do with Moses... And when he was on the mount. Struck it twice? No, they had to, he had to, he had to cover himself and they, uh, it had to be covered and blinded because his face shone. Do you remember his face shone? Yeah, they asked him to cover up. And, and, and Paul writes, he goes back to that illustration in the Old Testament with Moses that they're still blinded, that they can't see that. Partially. They're, they're, and occasionally a Jew gets saved. They're still blinded. And he, he states that, that uh, my nation is still blinded. The blinders have not yet come off. They, they, they won't see it. All right. Now, how the gospel affects our conduct. Romans 12, go there. Those peaceniks are now, that are in our government are now warmongers. They, they put on the other uniform. Whatever pays the most. Mm -hmm. They tell them, I'm not going to, uh, to uh, Ukraine. I ain't going to do that. So, uh, we did a lot of work for Vietnam. I was, uh, I was in eighth grade. I did a ton of work for Vietnam. We made a lot of control panels for the bulldozers. What did the bulldozers do in Nam? Anybody know what a bulldozer did back then? Clear you know, their landing. armor plated and all. You got to protect the guy driving the sucker. Clear landing fields. Well, landing fields, 
they're pushing the jungle back. What's the stuff they, not Agent Orange. Oh, it is Agent Orange. I want to say soy, soy cream. It, it, like the movie. It's the Agent Orange. It, it, they're all getting cancer. They put, put, what's the Agent Orange? What does that do? I'm pretty sure that's a defoliage. It kills the jungle. Yeah. And then they get it behind the, the big giant bulldozers to push. We did tons of work. We tried to get a guy uh, uh, out. He finally got drafted. We tried to keep him, but we couldn't. The, uh, Uncle Sam got him. Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam needs you. And so he, he went. Agent Orange, courtesy of Monsanto. Oh, Agent Orange. It's Agent Orange. Courtesy of Monsanto. They would uh, dust crop that. They're dumping that. Right? So anyway, uh, if you, are, are you at Romans 12? Now one way to remember this, there's two places where the gifts are given. Romans 12 and 1 Corinthians 12. So let's go to 1 Corinthians 12. We preach and teach that one list is active. The other list is no longer active. One list is, is ongoing, another list is, is no longer ongoing. If you, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, if you go to the first verse, it says, now concerning spiritual gifts, these are spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant The word ignorant is used in the Bible. Paul preaches about ignorance. Uh, if any man, he says this, if any man be ignorant, here's how one preacher, one of my pastors described it. If any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. In other words, Paul preached about whatever the topic was, he clears it up, this is the facts. If any man be ignorant, in other words, not knowing, let him be ignorant. I, in other words, I've explained it. Now either get with the program or just say that way. And my one pastor, this is how he, he described it. If, if you're stupid, stay stupid. Is that, is that pretty much to the point? That's, that's the point. You can't get any more point in that. You're stupid, say stupid. You don't want to learn. But Paul uses this ignorant thing. I, I don't want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols. Now what is a dumb idol? Even as you were led. What does the word dumb mean? Unable to speak. It doesn't mean you're stupid. It means you can't speak. So people that bow down to these idols, the idol can't talk. It can't talk. Therefore I give you to understand that no man speaketh by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Uh, that Jesus is the Lord. By the way, the confession of a lost man is found in Philipp I believe it's in Philippians that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is what? Yeah. I can't hear you. Lord. Is Lord. And so there's a difference. And they say that Jesus is Lord. Here it says Jesus is the Lord. And so uh, who's the spiritualist? I can't, she's a, uh, an actress. Shirley McLean. She'll get on, she gets on the view. Now it's not the view, but she gets on a program like the view. Oprah. Pardon? Maybe Oprah. Remember Oprah Winfrey? It could have been Oprah Winfrey. And so Shirley McLean says, uh, well, it says there, what they want to do is defunct the Bible and prove that. It says that no man can say other by than the Spirit that Jesus is the Lord. And so she, she's a witch. Shirley McLean, is, uh, McLean, or whatever her name is, she, she's a pure witch. So she gets on over Winfrey, she says, I'll say it, Jesus is the Lord. Yeah. See? 
Well, I just go by what the verse says. By the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit had you say that. <laughs> it just means what it says. The Holy Spirit had you say that. All right. So down and down, it's a, a, all right. He says, now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. So there is, you cannot remove the triune God. That is the Holy Spirit of God. And there's a, a, a variety of these gifts. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. When we say the Lord, that is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he administers it to it. There's a variety of these gifts, and he's going to pass them out. He, he passes them out. By the way, he's not going to give you anything that you can't do. He's, he's not going to do that. He, he knows how to administer those gifts. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God. Notice in verse 4, you have the Spirit. In verse 5, you have the Lord. And in verse 6, you have God. One is, is the Holy Spirit. The next one is the Lord Jesus Christ. And the third one is God Almighty. You can never separate Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They're all one. It's, it's a, a, this triune God. And, and all three of them appear. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. And through the power of God is you're going to work and perform these, these gifts that are given to you. By the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Verse 7, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. It, it, it's like this. When you read through the Gospels, all of a sudden Peter, in Acts, all of a sudden Peter's saying things. Peter didn't go to the university. He didn't go to college. He didn't go to the university. He sat under the Lord for three years. But he didn't have this form. All of a sudden he's saying things. Well, he's been given a gift, a gift uh, to be able to do that. Where today, I'm sorry, you've got to go to school. It's, it's a tough break, but that's what you have to do. You're going to have to, you have to now work at this. Back then they did do it. They, they were speaking in tongues and, and all these the knowledge by another uh, faith, by the same spirit to another, the healing by the same spirit to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, discerning of spirits. Um, now, you could go to other uh, verses and says uh, that God is giving us a, a discerning spirit. I, I said under the same guy that says stupid is stupid, here's this discerning spirit. He's the pastor. He's got the discerning spirit. Nobody else, we, we sit under this stuff. And our conclusion that we came up with 35 years ago, there's only one way out of this. Because we've sat under every, everything imaginable. The only way out of this is to do what, Mrs. Tucker? We want out of this. We have to start our own church. Start our own church. We, 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 we want out of this. Because everything under the sun is there. So, um, uh, oh, uh, what did I say? Diversity? A discerning of spirits. A, a discerning spirit. Well, there's another verse that says that we have a discerning spirit. According, we can discern according, not what's outside the Bible, we can discern what's according to the Bible. Well, this is how he interpreted that, that, this discerning spirit. He's the pastor. So if, he, if it didn't pass the smell test for him, you, you can't, in other words, you can't watch Little House on the Prairie unless he ordained it. Is they become they become dictators. They dictate every move. And when when you get to the they get uh, one pastor told me at the end he said yeah what what happens is uh, they're getting special revelations from God. It always ends up where and we have people they they, they flood in here in waves 
and they'll say, well, the pastor's saying this and that. It, it always ends up, anybody knows where this ends up at? It ends up, see, I'm the one who's one-on-one -on -one talking to these people, right? I don't necessarily share this with the congregation. Where does it end up, Mrs. Tucker? It always ends up in the bedroom. Since they want full control of your life. This is a, this is a these are control freaks. Since we want full control here, it's got to go to a place where you, you, that's, and there's verses about this, by the way. To clear all this up, I said, well, they go here, here. I said, well, you want to clear it up? I'll clear it up in the two verses. We go and we read the verse, yeah, see, because they have no business being there. So another pastor says, well, the only way they can find out what's going on, in on there is they're going to have to set up a chair there and spend all night long taking notes. And that's where it always ends up, it, because they want and they desire full control. This is an adult class. Full control over your life. That's where it always ends up. And we've sat under this stuff. Uh, I know that one was you could go see, um, not that I have any desire to go see it, I could care less. You could go see, what, what was the popular play up in, uh, in Canada, at Ontario? Family Opera. Say it again? Family Opera. Family Opera. You can't go see Phantom of the Opera. Man, the minute, the minute, the, finally the, the flood broke and they, and they marched out, all marched out. You know where they went? They went right up to Toronto to go see Family Opera. What they were told, you can't go see. Whatever reason why. Well, maybe he's getting a kickback from the tickets. I don't know. <laughs> but you could, they all flooded up there to go see that. We've been through all that. It, it goes from there to home church, to witches running churches, to this is centered around the meal, whoever's house they do the preaching. We've been to it where our best friend, our best friend, said if there was a gun in there, we would have shot each other. That's how bad it gets. We would literally kill each other. It gets that bad. Is that Christian? None of that is. And you think it's, 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 it's not, it's rampant, folks. It's rampant. So the gifts and how these gifts affect. So we run through this. One is the, uh, uh, to another, the working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirit, diverse kinds of tongues to another, interpretation of the tongues. We are under a place where the guy not only spoke in tongues, he interpreted the tongues. He said, well, you mean I can go yabba dabba do any way I want, and I can tell you what that means, too. It, it just, it's bizarre. And so we said the only way out of this is to then just get our, our own church and, and start our own church. Because these guys, have, they, they, they literally got a ninth grade education. It just, it, it just it is frustrating. Now back to Romans 12. Romans 12. You can remember where the gifts are given by 1 Corinthians 12 and Romans 12, just by those numbers. So in Romans 12, these are the gifts. In, in the one, you, I think you have... I think you have 12 gifts here. We have eight gifts. We preach that these are the gifts that are active today. The others are no longer active. I mean, you're not going to go over there and raise the dead. You're not going to do that. Did they do that back then? They did. By the way, why did they do those gifts? Why were those gifts given? To give proof to what these disciples were saying, to, it, was, it was like going out to a car with a dead battery. <coughs> and you put the, the jumper cables on it and you want to give this thing a jump start to get the church a jump start, to get it going. So here in Romans 12, it begins at verse six, having then gifts differing according to the grace. Now this is the part where it affects your conduct and my conduct. Uh, gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, we pro prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Now, now, back then, 
they could prophesy outside of this book because it wasn't yet written. And so, but it, now you can only, I can, I'm a prophet, but I can only prophesy what this book says. What is recorded, not what's not recorded. So you have prophecy, uh, ministry, let us wait on ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth. Oh, so we, we've been, in, these are fundamental independent Baptist churches. We were in the, in the popcorn. We were now invited by our friends. We have to go to this. This now is a Baptist church. This is a fundamental, independent, King James only Baptist church. It's where, uh, where ministry, let's wait on ministering, he that teaches on teaching, uh, where during the sermon, while I'm preaching, since you get a revelation, whatever, whatever, Who's going to, who's, well, how many runs are going to get in the ninth inning? I don't know. They stand up and start quoting verses according to what, it, 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 popping up doing this. And at, we, we were invited to this, and, and this was now utopia. This is the new utopia. This is the way it should be. The wife and I are looking at the kids are all there. I don't know what they remember. We're looking at each other and saying, well, man, as soon as the amen is given, they were given, oh, by the way, always the attraction is the pizza. So they were having a meal. We're looking at each other and said, man, the, the minute the amen is given, or, or the last of the, the hamburgers, sir, we're out of here, man. We're not coming back to this. It all, all that stuff ends in a disaster. It all ends in a disaster. Pop, it, it sounds like confusion. But they, they find these these new things and they, they get this new this new guru to preach and teach this kind of stuff. They're popping up like corn. Uh, exhorting on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. So you got prophecy, ministry, te teacheth, exhorteth, giveth. Ruleth in mercy. Those are the, those are the, I believe, I didn't make it kind of think it, oh, it says seven gifts. Seven gifts, those are what, act, and they're kind of vague. They're kind of vague. But those are the active gifts. This is what's practical. Uh, chapter 13 of Romans 13. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. That is, uh, if you read through there, there is no power but God, the powers that are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. The rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. It doesn't mean the ruler has to be saved. When, when I think of electing people, the last people, we I know the last people that the wife and I want to vote for. Are necessary. We don't look to see if they're Christian or not. We see if they're able to rule. And by the way, God puts them in, in and out. Is, you know, there's the, vo the verse that Jesus says uh, uh, is that the lost, I, I, can't, I didn't quote it, I'm, I can't quote it right now, that lost people are smarter than saved people. Now, what part of that don't we understand? Why is there? Yeah, they're wiser. They're, lost people are, are smarter than... I'd rather have a lost man in there. What Nebuchadnezzar did God's bidding. And so the terror, the rulers are not a terror to good works. If you're doing good, you don't have to worry about the police, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Now, the, the mainstay, this, this guy died just before we got saved. Now, we got saved later in life. Just before we got saved, he's a mainstay. He would preach against uh, the governor that got elected in, in Texas. Say, I don't have to obey that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to obey God. And on and on this goes. Where they're, Now we got a ton of preachers on there locking arms. I don't know what they're doing. And I think within a week after that, he died in a plane crash. So the government is given in Romans 13. And so we'll have other people arguing 
they'll say, well, that government's not that government. And what I, on and on, it, we, we, we put up with this stuff. You know, we got people, not now, we don't have that now, but they won't even pay their taxes. They won't pay their taxes. And we got every excuse in the book to twist that, they, they twist that, they, they need to get a job from president. Doubtful disputations, there are things that are doubtful. What are, what are things that are doubtful? Well, Easter seed, the Easter egg, and it's called Esther, that's, that's demonic. Now you take Christmas, some people honor Christmas, some people, it, it, listen, if you want to do Christmas, do it. I'm not offended. If I don't do it, well, the doubtful disputation is, is one example is where is the hamburger coming from? You and I don't worry about where the hamburger came from. Where was the hamburger coming from? They, they were cooking a pot roast. Where'd the pot roast come from? It was sacrificed to a devil. And then, so Paul says, well, that doesn't offend me. That devil can't even speak. It's just a wooden statue. And so it was sacrificed that, but for some Christians, they were offended by that. Now, in other words, I should think less of you. Pass the steak. If, if, if you think, but you shouldn't think less of me. I eat the steak. And you don't want to eat the steak? That's your, your prerogative. Those are what doubtful disputations are about. Or what, what, um, uh, um, holidays you're going to do. All right, uh, uh, it ends in uh, 28 names are listed in commendation, where God commends people. Uh, anybody know the first name that's mentioned? It was the name of a baby that was given here that died of, uh, uh, she didn't have a skull. Phoebe, Phoebe, uh, Phoebe, our sister, and it commends uh, 28 people there. He, he, Paul, Paul doesn't do a lot of that, but there he commends 28 people. He compliments them. Uh, and so that this is how it affects your conduct and my conduct. You, you, you want to see conduct. You want to see conduct. I had a girl, I, I've given this illustration. L listen, I play the piano and I play professionally. So I invited a girl that was at our house who has a degree in music. I don't have a degree in music. She's got a degree in music and that of specializing in performance. Would you expect her to be pretty good? So I played the Hyde Park thing, and I was Roosevelt at Hyde Park, and I said we had a, other, a lot of other Christians there. And I said, well, why don't we, uh, uh, I've asked, the, and I asked the girl privately, I didn't put her on the spot, I said, would you be willing to perform for us? I've given this, this is how wicked it is. I said, would you be willing to perform for us? And she, and she said, yeah, I'd, I'd be willing to play. I mean, she majored in it. She has the degree, I don't. I'm not gonna sit there and perform. So I asked her to perform and, and she agreed privately. I didn't want to put her on the spot publicly. And so she agreed and I said, well, you pick out what you want to play. She went through the hymnal and she picked out what she wanted to play. She set up and I said, why don't we all come in here? It's like a 1931 film. Is Chopin is here, we're, we're gonna sit down and, and listen. And so we all sat down and we listened. I mean, it was, it was marvelous. We really enjoyed our time. The second, and so I was giving her a commendation, like Paul gives a commendation, I commended her in, in a way where she was able to show how good she was and it was entertaining and a blessing. I wanted it to be a blessing. The second, the, the second it was over, they were clamoring. My kid, my kid can play too. I'm, I'm better than you are. It, it, it was, for the wife and I, it shocked us. And we're not talking about people that have been saved for a week or two. 
these people are safe for 40 years. They were clamoring to be number one in the class. It was, it was, it was a shocker. It was a wake-up call for us. It was a shock. His father blessed not the preaching of Christ. The Romans road is given there. That needs to be, uh, the last on your list, that needs to be memorized. You should memorize that. And we are going to go from there now into first Corinthians. 